Developing story out of Toronto, Brad Tree Living set to be introduced as the next general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, replacing Kyle Dubas. We're going to cut to the chase with NHL analyst Marty Barron. Here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about does it really matter who the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs is if he doesn't have full autonomy? What does this do for the Austin Matthews negotiations? What about the f core four? Because they've been pretty much promised they're all coming back. And what does this mean for Sheldon Keefe? All right, so let's cut to the chase with Marty Barron. First up, Marty, what do you think of the hire of Brad Tree Living as the next GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs? I think it's a great hire. I look at Brett Tree Living and his experience as a general manager in Calgary and some of the moves that he had to make and the tough situation that he was put in with some of his roster players and having to make some trades and some cap management situations. So I think he's got that experience. He's still young. You know, he's in his 50s. So when you look at Brett Tree Living, it's not a situation where he's in the twilights of his career and, you know, approaching 70 and you're thinking, well, he'll be here for a couple of years and pass it along to somebody else. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and, and he's got a passion. I think he's a smart hockey, play, a, a hockey mind. So, for me, I think it checks all the boxes. Now, obviously, Toronto is a tough market, and there's definitely some big-time moves that need to happen uh, for this franchise to move forward. So, I, 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 like, I like everything that Brad brings to the table. Now, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, we're going to go back and say, well, we should have seen some of the signs, but I don't think there's any right now. Okay, but you just gave me a list of all the qualities Brad Trillivan brings to the position, which is fine, all well and good. But one of the reasons Kyle Dubas left was he wasn't being granted the kind of autonomy that he wanted to be able to run the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. So if it's Brad Trillivan, if it's Mark Bergevin, if it's whoever else, Ray Shiro, does it really matter if the guy wearing the GM label in Toronto doesn't really have the right to make decisions on his own, if Brendan Shanahan is still involved the way he was with Kyle Dubas, if the board and the ownership of the Toronto Maple Leafs are still involved, does it matter what Brad Trelevin can bring to the table if his decisions aren't final anyway? I get what people are saying that as a general manager, if you want to trade player A, right? And you shouldn't be having to call above or maybe you call the ownership and you say, I'm trading the $10 million player. But at the same point, like there's much more to the GM's job that's important, like dealing with your scouts, dealing with your player development, uh, dealing with the staff, the hockey staff, the training staff, the sports science staff. This all comes under the general manager, yes, Brendan Shanahan, as the uh, president of hockey operation, definitely has a say in it. But the everyday management of every piece that make the hockey department go is usually under the general manager. It's not just about the roster management and the cap and signing the contracts and making trades. There's a lot but more. Marty, I think Marty. that's where Brad Free Living has a ton of experience. Yes. But, Marty, you're, you're going out there trying to hire the best general manager you possibly can, which means you're trying to bring in a body who you trust to make the right decisions about how much to pay a guy, what guys to move out, what guys to bring in. If you genuinely did the search you wanted to do and you genuinely believe you're bringing it, because price is no object, bringing in the best guy who could do it, why would you trump his decisions when it comes to player management, to trades, to finances, you don't want just a general manager to come in and take care of the details of the scouting staff and take care of the other details. That's fine. You can get that pretty much anywhere. But if you really believe that Brad Trelevin or anybody else is the right guy to make the right personnel decisions, why wouldn't you leave that in his hands? Well, I get that there's got to be a conversation to inside the organization as a team, right? There's a lot of uh, organization that have a general manager and that general manager talks to the owner. But inside the general manager and his boardroom, there's assistant general managers, there's head coaches. They all have a voice. There's your head pro scout, your head amateur scout. There's all need to be that, that, that working together mentality. And I think it doesn't matter if your title is general manager or president of hockey operation or whatnot. It's just a title and it's just a way to justify your salary at the end of the day. But the, the structure yeah. is pretty much the same around the NHL that you have a president of hockey operation and a general manager or not. Um, the Montreal Canadiens went from somebody having all the say in Mark Bergevin to say, no, we're going to hire a president of hockey operation in Jeff Gordon and a general manager in Kent Hughes. They have to work together, just like Mark Bergevin had to work with his assistant GM, GM before that. Uh, so I, 
I get what you're saying, that if you're the GM, as we know the role of a general manager, you should be able to pick up the phone and call the LA Kings and say, I want to talk to mm -hmm. the GM and I want to talk to you and make a trade with you. But that's not how it works anymore. Yeah. The general manager picks up the phone and then he says, okay, this is the, you know, the landscape of a deal that I'd like to see. You go ahead, you take it to your boardroom and you discuss. I'll take it to my boardroom and we discuss and we'll get it worked like that. That's why so many trades come in after the trade deadlines, you know, because there's so many people involved in the whole thing that it takes a little longer. All right, so let's get to Brad Trelevin's priorities now. Obviously, he's got to deal with the core four, but first and foremost, he's got to figure out this Austin Matthews thing. How critical is it to get Austin Matthews signed to an extension on July the 1st? Get this done and out of the way, because once that no move kicks in, all control, all leverage now goes to Austin Matthews, and there's nothing more the Leafs can do about it. You actually have to know, Gino, before July 1st, if there is a... A, a, a framework to make a deal with Austin Matthews, right? Because you want the flexibility, if you have to, to make the trade at the draft, because that's where it will be the most value at the draft if you were to dangle that carrot that is Austin Matthews in front of all other 31 general managers. So, uh, look, I understand you're not supposed to sign before July 1st, but I was a, a free agent one year, and, and not like Austin Matthews, but... I was announced at 12.01, right? Like, I mean, my deal was done. I had the permission of, you know, my team, but it, it still, it doesn't matter. You have to know beforehand if there is a framework that is um, manageable with Austin Matthews, because if it isn't, and if it looks like it's going the wrong direction, that is going to be a big hurdle for Brad Trillian to go. There's another thing, too. You have to figure out what to do with Sheldon Keefe. You have to know if you're the new general manager, are you moving forward with your coach or not? Because that is also going to affect Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and William Nylander and everybody on the team as if they want to stay long-term or not. Maybe they really like Sheldon Keefe and they would, wouldn't play for anybody else. Well, that's kind of stupid because you're a hockey player. You got to play for whatever the coach is. But <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of decision, not just Austin Matthews, but the coach is going to be a big one as well. Do you think that Trey Levine is going to have full autonomy in deciding what to do with Sheldon Keefe, or do you think that gets handed to him and Shanny or somebody upstairs says, look, let's at least start with Sheldon Keefe and see where we go from there? Uh, I think there's going to be a really, really strong conversation. And to be honest with you, if I'm Sheldon Keefe, I'm having a conversation with Brad Trey Levine right away. Hey, am I your guy right, right now? Because you see all these jobs getting taken, right? There's Andrew Brunette in Nashville, and now the Rangers and the Capitals have gotten their guy. And, you know, the Rangers are looking for their guy. The Flames are looking for their guy. Like, they're, the jobs, the, the musical chair is going to stop. And Sheldon Keefe, if that somehow is being told, you're not our guy, he needs to know so sooner rather than later. So I think the conversation is going to happen right away. I think that's probably the first thing that gets done is either to say Sheldon Keefe is our coach or he's not. And then after that, you go to Austin Matthews. That needs to happen. You need to trade one of the core four. It, it, you need to trade one of them. There's no other ways about it. I think William Nylander is the one that gets going, right? And I know he's just scored 40 goals. He's got a lot of value, and he's pretty val valuable to the Leafs as well. But I think that's the guy you got to look to push out there uh, moving forward. If your coach is in place, if Austin Matthews, you know you're going to get an extension, you got to look at trading one of the, the core four as well. The bottom line, cutting to the chase, three words for Brad Trelevy. Congratulations and good luck.